Dr. Madness that I see you have in your hand, and he joins me now. Ali, good morning to you. What do you think about this, specifically because this woman is the director of mental health at a California children's hospital? Right. I mean, this is an executive at the gender clinic that yeah. researches gender development and offers advice and policy advice for parents and for clinics to transition children. So this professor is basing her minotaur theory on a conversation she said she had with a seven-year-old boy yeah. who said he looks like a boy at the front and he looks like a girl at the back. And so she's now basing her policy and what she's saying to parents and other doctors based on this. So this is the kind of an example of a doctor that is uh, leading this gender identity um, com campaign pushing it on kids you know now we're telling kids to be a minotaur what are they gonna do yeah. put horns on them like it's, it's really crazy and it's very worrying that this is a person that has authority to push for gender transitions yeah, so she's sort of leaning into this and saying it's okay that you feel that way as opposed to maybe exploring what's going on do you really feel this way maybe you should change your mind I think one of the big concerns is that when you have a child who identifies as transgender and you know there is real gender dysmorphia that some people have but not everybody if you do lean into it and they're so young maybe they could change their mind down the road how often does something like that actually happen I mean see that's the issue so it's when you have doctors and gender clinics planting the seed in the child's head so the child isn't thinking about their identity and suddenly it's being pushed on them mm -hmm. we also see the case in certain schools in Virginia and Maryland and New Jersey recently that are transitioning kids without the parents even knowing so it's about you know that is harmful to put these ideas into kids heads because some days kids might want to be a pirate, they might want to be a dinosaur or an astronaut, yeah. but you don't go suddenly affirming that. So this has become very commonplace and we see time and time again uh, school districts that are pushing this. Yeah. You know, Ali, I wanted to ask you about this federal appeals court that just ruled that Mar in Maryland, uh, schools don't have to tell parents if their children identify as transgender at school. Uh, what do you think about that and what dangers can be presented because of the secrecy uh, that even parents may not know what's going on with their own kids? So you had three groups of parents that actually took this to the Maryland Federal Appeals Court and the court basically said that the parents never stated the child was transgender in the first place so they had you know they basically dismissed mm -hmm. the case but this was a school that was telling the kids um, what are your preferred pronouns telling boys to use girls restrooms and you know pushing this on kids and again yeah. kids don't have a concept of this they change their minds they fluctuate and they're very impressionable so when you're teaching this as the curriculum that is very harmful and I think parents are getting very upset that this is being done behind their back. Ollie tell us about yourself tell us why you're here while you're speaking about this issue and also about your book Gender Madness why you wrote it. Um, so I've been through the detransition process before I've struggled with gender identity and you know I've really witnessed what is going on right now and look adults can make decisions on their own and you know we accept that and it's a very accepting society but it's when it's being pushed on kids so um, I've written a book and I discuss all of this in gender madness about how harmful it is to push this on kids and how we're seeing a rise in particularly young teenage girls undergoing double mastectomies hormone replacement therapies and puberty blockers and how it's simply a very harmful approach because kids cannot consent they don't understand the long-term ramifications yeah. of these things in many ways these are irreversible surgeries mm -hmm. as well uh, it should be taken very seriously and you have a powerful voice on this topic. Ali, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thanks, Kali.